What's going on? What's going on? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Risen Church family. How are y'all doing tonight? I know y'all already know what I'm about to ask. Drop some fire in the chat if you are live with me on tonight. Listen, it's raining outside right now, but listen, we still putting this live up, okay? Listen, can it, can we matter of fact, we three, listen, we three for three. Okay, this this is our third consecutive uh, Wednesday night change that we are doing, and I told y'all two three weeks ago we gonna be consistent. We gonna be consistent from six for the next sixty days, eight weeks or so. We consistent with face uh, Facebook Live uh, Wednesday night change, y'all. And listen, when we not stopping now. Let me be honest. Now, see, see, this is the part where people. <laughs> People won't experience a lot of change in their life because they're not honest. And honestly, I was not about to come tonight. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm I'm that preacher that's going to be like, like totally. Did I just call myself a preacher? That's crazy. Anyway, listen, I'm the type of person that like I want to be 100% honest with God. Like I did not. I was not going to come tonight. I was going to just take the L and be like, man, I guess I'll have to say it again and then come up with some excuse. In it. But something in the inside of me was like, no, get down to the church. Go ahead and go live. Because we're going three for three. Throw some threes in the chat. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And for the third week, and for uh, Pastor Co-Pastor Duke uh, doing Bible study for three nights, three Wednesdays in a row, okay? Listen, drop some threes in the chat. For Listen, for those that are joining for the first time, I do apologize. I am Co-Pastor Duke. I get the privilege and the honor of leading an amazing church called Risen Church. Risen Church! Right here in the city of Travelers Rest, alongside our lead pastor, Pastor Juan Sharp Sr. Um, and it is an honor and a privilege that I get to exercise a gift um, that I believe God has given me. So listen, welcome to Wednesday Night Change. We're calling it Wednesday Night Change. WNC. Oh, I kind of like that. Somebody said drop some WNCs in the chat. WNC. I don't know. I might have my wife create a graphic or something with that. Like, I don't know. So listen, a few house rules for those that are new. For those that already know what's up, y'all already know what's about to go down. Grab a Bible, whether it's physical or whether it's electronic, whatever, grab a Bible. All right. Next thing, grab a pen and a notepad. We talk about sticky statements. I may say something tonight. God might use me to say something that you need to write down because you're going to need it at some point in your life, okay? Next thing you want to do is go ahead and share this and tag this to someone. Maybe they, may, you might find it beneficial for them to listen to this crazy dude right now <laughs> uh, at a table, at a church, about to uh, teach some Bible study, all right? So go ahead and do that, and go ahead and grab you something to drink, because we're going to just have a conversation tonight, as we normally do on Wednesday night change. Yeah, let's go. All right, so y'all ready to get started? Are y'all ready to get to go ahead and drop some fire in the chat? Let's get to it. Let's get to it. I already got my timer set. Um, so we not going to, I'm not, I don't want to be before you long tonight. I know last week was a little long. It was a little lengthy. I apologize. I do value your time um, because I guess I, I was excited last week. What, what time were we do? I was excited. If you have not watched last week, go ahead and go watch it. I will review a few points that we talked about on last week, but you can go to our Facebook page or our YouTube page. And you'll see um, our Bible studies on last week. Um, if you just scroll up, it should be above this video or below this video if you're watching it live right now. Um, but I don't really don't. I'm sorry. But here's it. a quick, quick review from last week. Last week, we talked about point one, we said, and we was teaching from the idea or the story of the prodigal son. You know, the prodigal son uh, was a was a son of uh, a, a brother of a second. He is him and his brother. He was a younger son. He wanted all his inheritance right away, went out, party like a rock star, blew all the money, and found himself working for someone. Nobody gave him nothing. And that's a whole other sermon in itself. And he ended up getting hungry. A famine hit the land. He broke, don't have no money, and he's about to, like, pig slop. He's out there tending to the pigs. Like, this is the worst job you can have during this time. And he's looking at this slop like, man, I'm hungry. And this slop looking, I right, okay, like I, I can make some slop oatmeal with this. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
And he's, I can just imagine in my mind, you know, I, I put a little spiritual hot sauce on it. Like he's in slow motion. Maybe he got a bowl and a spoon. I don't know. And he's this close to like licking and down in this slop that pigs is in. And the Bible says he came to himself. He came to himself and said to himself that my father, even certain, listen, even the servants at my dad's house eat better than this. I'm going back home. <laughs> he made up in his mind and said, you know what? I know I'm in a jacked up situation right now, but I, I can go back home. And he goes back home, and the dad welcomes him in with open arms. And one of the first points that I made was that there is not, there is no situation that a changed mind can't get you out of. Yeah. That that point still hits hard. <laughs> there is there is no situation that a changed mind can't get you out of. And I wrote, and I and I put this down. I said, if your mind can conceive it your heart can believe it, you can achieve it. It does not matter what it is. But your mind, it it starts with your mind. Okay, point number two, we talked about humility is the seed that produces change, right? Because he was humble enough to say, you know what? I made a mistake. I'm going to go back home. He said he had a, listen, if you read the text, go back and read this, because he says he has a whole conversation with his father in his mind. He guided the conversation in his mind before he physically had the conversation with his father. Y'all got to read this. So we talked about humility is the seed that produces change. I said that with humility comes wisdom. Wisdom provides a plan for change, right? So watch this. Point number three was uh, a quote by uh, another pastor, uh, Craig Koshel. His, his His quote says this. <coughs> Excuse me. He says, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Listen to what he just said. Turn turn your phone up real quick. Listen to this. He said, our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. So, listen. It, this is why, and this is one of the points that I made. I said, this is why it's so important to guard your mind. Because where your mind goes, guess what? You go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. When we talked about Proverbs 4 and 23, right? Guard your heart. With, we are talking about the mind above all else, for it determines, watch this, the course of your life. This is why it's important to guard your mind. This is why Paul talks about in Romans 12, don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And this is why we say the statement, the quality of your life is largely impacted by the condition of your mind. What what have your mind been conditioned to think? Ah. that produce the action that you experiencing in your life. Because if you want to experience a changed life, guess what? It starts with a changed mind. Listen, I don't have nothing new for you. Change your mind. Like, we can end the live right now. That's all I need you to do. The baby steps. Change your mind. And here's, here's the last. If I could have add a, um, uh, a uh, point forward to this, it would be guard your mind. Because what, if we think about the prodigal son, what in his mind, uh uh-oh, let's see, what was the influence that made him want to take that money early? Sounds like a little pride to me. Come on. Come on. Let's talk about it. What in his mind provoked him to say, you know what, Dad, I want all my money right now. Whatever you was about to inherit, whatever my inheritance is before you pass away, no, I want that bread right now. It's our mind. 
I want you to think back to some of the decisions that you made, some of the rational decisions or the some of the blatant decisions that you've made. It was like, ooh, I probably shouldn't have did that. What was your mind at? And this is what want this. Oh, okay. Okay, so watch this. This this and this is and this is where we're going tonight because it could be suggested that um the first step to solving any problem in our life, anything, is seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't solve what you can't see. We cannot address what we have not identified. And for some of us, listen to this, we have bad thinking problems. And I believe it is Satan's strategy to keep us unaware of the issues we wrestle with that has stopped us from experiencing life the way God intended. Come on. I want y'all to think about this. And this is why we have to guard our mind. I wrote this, I said, this is why it's important for every believer who wants to experience life the way God intended should develop the right attitude that says and admits and acknowledges that there are things about me I can't see that are hurting me. <laughs> There's some stuff that <laughs> there are things about you and I that we cannot see that are hurting us. You can't see bitterness. Oh, look, I didn't. Come on now. You can't see unforgiveness, the pain that a trauma happened in your childhood. But watch this. You see the fruit of that. Oh, you see the condition of your mindset, the stronghold. You see the fruit of that stronghold. The, uh, who see, and I don't want to go into strongholds yet because I, 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 want, I want to dedicate a whole few days or a few Wednesday nights about that. Um, so watch this. Watch. Now, it, 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 here's, here's, here's a story uh, that we're going to talk about real quick in Jeremiah 1. Now, listen to this because... This is a story between Jeremiah and God, right? And watch what God tells Jeremiah. First off, off rip. Watch this. He says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nation. I, Jeremiah, said, Almighty Lord. Listen, now, this is Jeremiah's response. Now, listen to this. He says, I do not know how to speak. I'm only a boy. <laughs> But the Lord said to me, don't say that. What, what have you been telling you? Uh, that has shaped your mind. What have you been telling you? He says, but the Lord said to me, don't say that you are only a boy. Having the right attitude means you must be disciplined on how you think, not just about your marriage, not just about how you think about your parenting skills or what you think about the job or your church or your business, but how do you think about yourself? What is your attitude toward yourself? I heard one preacher say it like this, and I'm going to try to get it right because I'm, I'm basing it off of memory. But he says, we can't just be excited about what God believes about us. We need to get excited about what we believe about us. 
Cause watch this. Listen to listen to this, please. Listen to me. Get come on. Don't 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 lose focus. I'm I'm going somewhere. Stay with me. Stay with me. How much time I got? Oh, okay. No, stay stay with me. We almost there. And I'm gonna let y'all go because I I'm, I'm not gonna um, give you all of it. Watch this. It says we as humans have around twelve to sixty thousand thoughts in a single day. Twelve to sixty. Thousand. Now that is a that's a huge window, but that's how many thoughts you have in one day, one 24 hour cycle. Right. And it says by it says the nation uh, the National Science uh, Foundation found that 80 percent of those thoughts between 12, 12,000 and 60,000 thoughts, 80 percent. Listen to this. 80 percent of those thoughts are negative. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? This And this is why we're going to spend the next 60 days, the next eight or so weeks, on our con- working on the mind. We're not changing. Like, yo, if you're looking for something else tonight on Wednesday Night Change, I'm sorry, you, you might as well cut this off because we ain't changing. Repetition is the best learning uh, mechanism. That's out there. One quote said that repetition is the best way to learn. <laughs> We're going to continue in this thing called change because we want to see change, not just in our lives, but in the lives of other people. But let's go back. Let's go back. So we have 12 to, 12 to 60,000 thoughts in one day. And they says, excuse me, they said, according to the National Science Foundation, they said 80% of those thoughts are negative. And we know all it takes is one negative thought to send us in depression. One negative thought to send us or cause anxiety to rise up. One negative thought to be bombarded with worry. All it takes is one. One thought. I wrote this, I said, one negative thought can steal your smile, destroy your peace, and kill your God-given assignment. Good God. Our thoughts are made up of our memories and beliefs and our our perceptions. Our thoughts determine the orientation of everything we do. They evoke, listen to this. I wrote this down. I said, they evoke the feelings that frame our world and motivate our actions, and they have the power to change the way we see not just the world, not just our uh, uh, spouse, but ourself, the mind. Y'all know, okay, so y'all remember the story when the children of Israel was in the wilderness and they had an opportunity to go take the promised land. Moses sends 12 spies to go spy out the land. Caleb and Joshua was the only two that came back with a good report out of the 12. 10 out of 12 said, no, we can't do it. And they spread this bad report throughout the camp. And they wanted to stone uh, Caleb and Joshua because they were talking about, yes, we can. We can do it. We can do all things through Christ. We can do it. But if you look at it, ah, that's how many. <laughs> and this is why. Ah, slow down. Okay, so watch this. This is why we need to continue to pray, read our word, and speak the word of God over our lives. You can have, and we're talking about 12, you can have 10 negative thoughts. And you read your Bible twice, and them two are supposed to fight ten negative thoughts? Them two little thoughts? Come on, man. Come on, son. <laughs> Come on. Right? So we, we got to do, listen, we got to do better with renewing our mind daily. And what they said was, if you go back and read this in Numbers, they said we look like grasshopper in our own eyes. Gosh. They... They said that we look like grasshopper in our own eyes, and they thought the same thing of us. Y'all got to go back and read this. This is what they thought about themselves. They thought, listen, this is what, and this is why I told you in the beginning, this is why it's, way, it's, more, it's, it's important to believe what God has for you. But it's, it's, it's also definitely important to believe 
what God has given you to believe for yourself. Because if they would have believed that they could take the land, they would have had the land early. Now, if you read the story even more about the, the children of Israel, this is where they spend 40 years in the wilderness. And this is why I, I, I wrote this one statement down. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, man. I put down there um, the way that you see yourself, you, you forfeit. I said when you, here it is, when you don't have the right attitude about yourself, you forfeit the provision God has waiting for you. Can I say that one more time? When you don't have the right attitude about yourself, you forfeit. You give up. You dust your hands. The provision God has waiting for you. What, what have we missed? Because we didn't have the right perception of ourselves. All right, here it is. Here it is. I need you to put everything on God. John 14 and 1 says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Now, again, here we go with that word heart. Like, we understand that that heart is, is, could be a metaphor for the mind. So if we read that again, he says, don't let your mind be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Listen, if we, if we want to cast all of our cares upon God, you have to have the mind to believe that he has the ability to handle all of your cares and worries. Okay. Here it is. All right, here we go. Y'all ready? Now watch this. Some of us, watch this. I wrote this down. I said, our actions are a direct result of our thoughts. If we have a negative mind, we will have a negative life. And for some of us, so many of our thoughts are about ourselves, are defined about ourselves, about ourselves, are defined, watch this, by our physical limitations. Uh oh. Now, I do, let, let me be honest, okay? We're going to be honest tonight. I do, I, how can I say this? Um, sometimes I'm a little biased to light-skinned people. You know what? I'm going to just say it, okay? I'm a little biased, okay? I need a little help. Uh, pray for me, okay? I always mess with uh, my friends. Um, her name is Maria. She's very, very light-skinned, and uh, I always pick with her. But we be going back and forth, dark skin versus light skin. Um, <laughs> but for, for others, we're talking about physical limitations. So, like, you cancel out your assignment that God's given you because you think that maybe you ain't the right color. Or maybe you think that you ain't the right size. Oh, I can't do that. Look, we just read it in Jeremiah. He said, I can't talk to them because I'm just a boy. Physical limitation. God said, don't say that. I ain't say nothing about you being a boy. What, what, what that got to do with anything? And what we do most, a lot of us, we forfeit our provision that God has for us based on a physical limitation. And what I'm trying to help you to do is not to think like that. Don't limit your physical limitations. Don't allow your, limit, your physical limitations to stop you from being all God has you to become. The very, listen, I said the very physical limitation that you think won't work for you will be the very thing that makes you unique and sets you apart from the masses. <laughs> that one, the physical limitation will set you apart from everybody else. There's a guy named uh, Nick Nick Vujicic. I think it, I think that's how you say his name, right? I'm not sure, but he he has no limbs. He was born with no limbs, like no arms, no legs, just body, right? Now, y'all probably seen him on YouTube. But listen to what he says. He said this quote. He says, "It's a lie to think. It's a lie to think you're not good enough." I'm preaching to myself. 
This, this may not even be a sermon for, like, this discussion may not even be for anybody else, but I know that this is for me. Listen to this. He says, it's a lie to think you're not good enough. It's a lie to think you're not worth of anything, not worth anything. It's a lie. And what happens is when we say we're not good enough, when we say, oh, I can't do that because of this, or I, I don't have the finances, I don't have the resources, I can't do this because this. Guess what you just created? Stronghold. You, so when we talk about stronghold, stronghold is like a fortress, right? It's like something, like something that can't get by. Like it's, it's a block. Like you can't get in here. So no matter how much truth you tell me, I've created a stronghold that will not allow that truth to access me. And this is why it was so important for us to understand that we have to guard our mind. We need to drench our minds in prayer. We need to drench our minds in the word of God. We need to drench our minds in Sunday and Wednesday night services. Anytime the doors of the church are open, we need to be in there. Because the devil don't take breaks. Put that in the chat and help somebody get free. The devil... Don't take breaks. Let me find it for y'all. Hold on real quick. It just came to my mind. I'm sorry. This is Bible study, right? We got to pull scriptures out, right? Okay, watch this. Hold on. I'm going I'm to get it for you. Watch this. First Peter. Where you at, First Peter? Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here, First Peter. Watch this. I want y'all to see this real quick. Watch this. Hold on. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm getting it. Here it is. First Peter. I want it. I want the fifth chapter. Here it is. Watch this. Listen. Listen. It says, 1 Peter 5 and 8, stay alert. One, 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 particular, version, uh, one particular version says, uh, be alert and sober-minded. It says, be alert, stay alert, and be sober-minded. Watch this. For your enemy, the devil, one says your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Be alert. Be sober-minded. Are y'all catching this? Are y'all tracking with me tonight? That's First Peter five and eight. I want y'all to. I want y'all to go back and read this. Right. Be sober-minded. For your enemy, the adversary, is lurking, looking around to devour anybody. And this is why Paul talks about in Ephesians that we must put on the whole arm of God. Yeah, listen, all of this circles back around like this. I'm not teaching anything new. Y'all have to go back and read these things. Now watch this. Here's another setback that we have. For some of us, our thoughts about ourselves are defined not just by our physical limitations, like we talk about physical, right? The next one is our emotional setbacks. And this is where we're going we to park it for tonight. I got one more, but we're running out of time. Watch this. So some of us are angry, bitter, unforgiving, sad, frustrated, or fearful because we do not have the right attitude about ourselves because of what happened in our past. Whew. Some of us can't change certain behaviors about ourselves because we are Battling the stronghold of, of the past, a past failure, a past regret, a past trauma, whatever it might be, you're stuck in the past. And what I said here, I wrote this down, I said, don't allow your past to assassinate your future. Because you can't master your future if you are a slave to your past. Did y'all just, did y'all just hear what I just said? (laughs) 
the judge is here, but I just, you can't master the future if you are a slave to the past. And what I'm trying to get you to do is don't think on the past. This is, and this, here we go. This is why we don't conform to the patterns of this world. Because the world would say, oh, he hurt you in the past. Listen, all men going to hurt you. What? No, that's not true. There's actually some genuine men that really want to love you and care for you and treat you white and treat you like the queen that you are supposed to be. But just because that happened in the past, don't that don't don't assassinate your future. I'm not even a single like <laughs> I hope y'all track it. It could have been a bad divorce. Now you now the world says, yeah, if, if you got divorced once, uh, uh, you're going you're gonna to get it again. What? Renew your mind daily. Renew your mind daily. One writer said, your past does not determine who you are. Your past prepares you for who you are to become. Come on. Your past does not determine who you are. Your past prepares you for who you are to become. And this is why in Philippians, he says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. I ain't get there yet. But I focus on this one thing. I focus on this one thing. I don't, I don't I'm, not, I'm not listening to what everybody says. I'm focused. I'm not watching what everybody does on IG. I'm focused. And this is what we need. We need to adopt this spiritually, maybe even physically, <laughs> physically. But y'all know how horses race and they have the blinders on and they cannot see on the sides. They can only see what's ahead. And if we put our eyes on Jesus, if we put our mind on Christ, you will be able to use the power of God to destroy every evil thought that, uh, come on, that rises itself against the knowledge of Christ. <sighs> You'll be able to tear down some strongholds in your life, in your mind. Okay, let me, let me rephrase that. You'll be able to tear some strongholds in your mind because strongholds is not physical. Strongholds are in the mind. It starts here, y'all. If we can change our mind, we can change our entire life. And listen to the rest of this verse. He says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past. <laughs> forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Verse 14 says, so I press on to reach the end of the race and receive a heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Come on. Come on. Drop some fire in the chat. I want you to, I, 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 and I love this phrase, and I, and I might deal with this next week because I'm done. We ran, we ran out of time. Listen to this. Push. Push. And they, they created this, like, uh, uh, alphabetical acrostics. It says, pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. I love Galatians 6 and 9. Don't get weary in well-doing, for at the right time, you'll reap a harvest if you don't give up. Push. Push. Somebody type it in the chat. Push. Pray until something happens. Can, can I give you two more? Watch this. Persevere. Push. Persevere until something happens. Persevere until something breaks. Persevere. Can I give you one more? Last one. Prepare. Prepare until something happens. Pray until something happens. Persevere until something happens. And prepare until something happens. Come on. Somebody type push in the chat. Push. And what I want you to do for the next coming weeks, push. Pray, pray, pray. Persevere 
I don't know what's going on in your life, but weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. It ain't, it's not going to last always. So push, continue to persevere and prepare. Prepare for what God is about to do in your life. And most miss what God has because they weren't prepared for it. The children of Israelites missed the promised land when they had an opportunity to get it because their minds weren't ready. Ooh. Jeez, Louise, come on. All right, we're done. Listen, I thank y'all for coming on tonight. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for blessing us on tonight. We're going to have to do a part two, God, and I'm grateful for what you're doing. I pray that you will do a work in the lives of your people. Thank you for allowing us to experience change. Thank you for just letting us have a conversation, helping us to open our eyes up to the changes that we need to make, the changes that we even think about ourselves. When we look ourselves in the mirror, God, help us to see what you see. Ah. Help us to see what you see, God, in the name of Jesus. For the person that uh, looks at themselves and not don't feel like they're not cute enough and they're not smart enough and they're not wise enough. But God, help them to see what you see in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that you change mindsets little by little. Oh, God, help us each day to renew our minds one day at a time, one hour at a time, one decision at a time. And Father, as we continue the next 60 days, days in this change series. I pray that you change me, change my delivery, change the way I speak, change things around me, change the, the way that people perceive it in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you help us. I pray a blessing upon the lives of your people in Jesus name. We pray everybody put amen in the chat. Amen. Listen, we got the prayer line at eight p.m. right after this. Go ahead and join us on the prayer line. I'll, I need somebody to post the, the number in the chat, go ahead and post the number in the code. Um, I don't know it by heart, <laughs> but post it in there, and we look to see hear from you on the prayer line. Uh, I, um, I also want to uh, say for those that are commenting, and uh, I see your comments, I see your posts, I see y'all dropping the fire. Thank y'all so much. And that, listen, give yourself a hand clap uh, and so drop some fire for yourself for wanting to be a part of change. Listen, nothing changes if nothing changes. Nothing in your life will ever change if you don't change something in your life. And I'm grateful and honored that you made a conscious decision to jump on these Wednesday night change uh, services because you know, just as, as well as I know, and that God knows that you want something better in your life. Because the quality of your life is largely impacted by the condition of your mind. God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday at 10 a.m. right here at Risen Church, 121 North Point at Highway, 10 a.m. I'll see you all the next one. Peace. God bless.